it's always a trade-off. Two generic things. I'll probably get in trouble for saying this. Say no to some of these things. Don't take any duties. Not to sleep. Personal judgment. Prioritize research. Research is the priority. Achieving the best research. So, again, I think different things work for different people. The one thing that I did is, uh, you know, I still try to do is start every day with research, no matter how busy you are, you know, try to have your teaching or your administrative commitments or your meetings, everything, like try to push it later in the day. Because uh, I feel that uh, starting the day with research, you know, that's when your mind is the freshest, you you will have, you know, a better chance of trying out something really new. So uh, starting the day with with this and spending at least a few hours on research at the start of the day, I feel that helps a lot because then in the rest of the day, even if you get like half an hour or one hour, then you, you know, you'll find your mind naturally going back to this problem that you started the day thinking about and progress, I think, uh, gets aided in this way. And uh, yeah, I would say prioritize research, right? Uh, of course, uh, teaching is important. Uh, you know, everything is important, right? Writing grants is important. But uh, finding one's own research agenda and making some progress on it, right? This, I think, is the most crucial thing. So I would, just like everyone else, I'm sure, I would say that's what needs to be prioritized. Mm -hmm. So there's certain things you you can't duck away from right like institutional duties uh, those, 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 those are things that that need to be done uh, but uh, yeah right now especially uh, uh, during the pandemic uh, it's it's really uh, uh, hard to stay focused on several si projects simultaneously and yeah this uh, uh, causes a lot of uh, i mean to me this caused a lot of um, a lot of uh, stress. I mean, uh, uh, but uh, when you specifically ask for uh, things that could be dropped, I mean, um, I can't drop teaching, I can't drop institutional duties, and, and definitely we can't drop uh, doing research, right? Maybe maybe a suggestion is to, uh, to focus more on uh, fewer projects, uh, but again, it, it's, it's always a trade-off, right? Uh, um, uh, when you focus on fewer projects, it might just be the case that oh, these projects don't go somewhere, and then you need to start sort of from the beginning, whereas when you're broad, it's easily possible that you over overstretch yourself so this happened to me uh, from, happens to me from time to time that I'm working on too many things simultaneously but but yeah um, it's, it's 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 really hard to to decide what to uh, what to drop what not to do I mean uh, really for most institutional duties you can just say okay I'm cutting back uh, from uh, the the time that I invest in uh, giving my my lectures, for instance, because I mean, there either you go all the way or the the effort and time you put into this won't um, pay off in some sense. Yeah. Um, I think it, it, um the again i'll try to say it with that one line sentence right so i think you should try to do everything with the purpose or targeted with the goal of uh, uh you know achieving the best research possible right so if you're trying to do something um you can always say well is this going to enable me to do better research and if it is then you should uh, you should certainly uh, take up take that up take that up. But if you you feel that this is going to actually hamper the task of doing better research, then you should drop it. So, for example, um, 
you know, you're trying to design a graduate uh, a grad class and you're trying to figure out what would be a good topic, you, you should immediately try to, learn, you know, uh, figure out whether teaching this class will improve the research that I will accomplish or my students will, and so on. And, and, and if the answer is no, then, you know, you've chosen the wrong class to be teaching. Um, you know, the topic might be popular, but if it's not uh, improving, uh, the research uh, uh, quality and, and the output from, from your team, then that's not the, the right uh, direction to go. If you, you know, if you successfully analyze every specific task uh, on this goal, I think that, uh, that, that, that you, know, uh, you would be making progress towards research and you're also likely to be happier because um, you know, you're going to end up spending most of your time on, on doing something that you enjoy, which is research. Good. So, um, first of all, um, if you can avoid taking any duties from your faculty, then and push those as much as possible to a later stage in your career, then it's it's the best. Don't take any duties. Don't. I don't recommend to volunteer to take any duties. There will be time for that. Now, um, I do think that even that it's like the, the first uh, years as, as being a junior faculty could be very, very involved. I still recommend trying to help the community with um, taking any um, help with reviews, with serving on committees, because that comes with exposure. Uh, when people approach you, that means they recognize your abilities and your expertise in some in some topics. So um, I really recommend not declining all this. I mean, of course, it depends on time and other uh, uh, I mean tasks and so on. But really, try to be involved in what happens in in the community, despite of really being uh, busy, uh, because it's it's very important. You'll see. You, through this, you make uh, connections with other people from related areas, and that would be helpful for the future. Not to sleep. <laughs> uh, okay, more seriously, um, again, um, I think, especially as a junior faculty, uh, I can only talk about myself, um, you just work very hard because uh, you know every part of uh, your job uh, is important and it's important in many ways of course okay if i need to rank research will be the most important naturally uh, this will be the main thing that you'll be judged uh, uh, about um but you know um you you also need to be a good teacher, uh, not only because this is your duty, but because it uh, it's important for your students to be well educated and it attracts students and you know um, things like that. And also the annoying things like doing uh, administrative uh, tasks and so on. And no one likes them, and <laughs> certainly I don't like them. But again, you know, you want to be in good terms with your colleagues in the department, and you want to, you know. <laughs> um, so, so basically, yeah, it's a, it's it's difficult maybe, but uh, we we need to find a way to to juggle. Uh, <laughs> all, all the tasks, uh, tasks. Unfortunately, th there is nothing I can say. Oh, you can completely ignore this. <laughs> um, uh, uh, I don't think uh, it's it's feasible. But uh, yeah, at, at, at the end, of course, uh, yeah, research is the most important. But uh, it's it's hard to to put uh, other things uh, aside. You, you need to. You need, to, you need to do well uh, on everything, basically. It's uh, not easy, but... Uh, um, and and the, it doesn't improve with time, by the way. 
Right, so one thing to learn when you become a faculty is that you're, the days where you did everything perfectly are over. <laughs> so uh, learning how to compromise is important. And every faculty does uh, things differently and compromise uh, elsewhere. Some people I know that uh, I write emails to and, and they take tons of time to reply and perhaps you need to send it more than once. So their, their communication is a bit slower. That's how they do it. Uh, so I think you need to find what's important for you and what, what are the things that if you would compromise, it will feel very bad for you, but try to compromise on quite a few of the other things. And in terms of priorities, especially when you're just starting, I think research is the priority. Um, I think that advising is important, but you shouldn't overdo it. And you should be very careful in taking students that are a very good match for you. And, and if, if the relation doesn't work, it, it can really drain you and, uh, and, and uh, kind of junior faculty don't have the experience of how to deal with the complications like that. So being very slow in accepting students not overdoing it is a good thing. Uh, emphasizing uh, research because uh, I think that most tenure processes uh, really focus on research rather than anything else. Uh, later, after you you do that, then I think that um, uh, investing in other things. Uh, I mean, that's the great thing about academia is that once you do tenure, you have a little, you have tenure, you have more flexibility in uh, how you do things and what you do. But um, yeah, I think that that's, that's uh, yet to compromise on the quality. Of, uh, usually it will be enough. I mean, I'm not saying, uh, yeah, it sounds like a horrible advice, but uh, I feel that, that that's just reality. And it's just reality. You cannot do everything perfectly. We are all kind of A students and we want to get an A plus on everything. That's how we got to academia. We cannot, I mean, a few Bs is fine. Uh, so at a practical level, I think every junior faculty member should learn how to say the word, oh, I'm really sorry, I'm just too busy uh, to do X you know, when you're asked to do something, because you do have to learn to turn people down uh, nicely, of course, you know, everyone has some reason why they're asking you for something, but it's just not possible. Um, how to choose, you know, um, the only thing that has ever worked for me in answering that question is to go back to the first question. You know, you are a faculty member for, one primary reason, right? You're, you've been hired to do great research, right? And also to teach your students, of course, I'm not saying that's not important, but you are there for, for doing great research and you love doing great research, otherwise you wouldn't be doing this, right? We, we can all make, you know, have a, have a much easier life if we decided not to, be, <laughs> not to be professors, right? But we love it. So you have to just make time for the thing that you love, which is the actual research. So I think it's very important to just block off time, right? To just have um, uh, long periods of time where um, you're doing research. Of course, you can also be meeting with your students if that's a productive um, you know, um, aspect of your research. Um, and to everyone else, you just have to say, I'm so sorry, I just, I have no availability on Wednesday. You know, I have no availability on Thursday from two to 8 p.m. or whatever it is, you know, like just have, <laughs> Have large chunks of time that are that are set aside um, for the core of what you need to do. Um, so again, this is very personal. You know, every person has to find their own way to deal with it. Um, uh, I'll probably get in trouble for saying this, but personally, <laughs> I find that there are certain types of tasks that will just fill all available time that I give them. Right, like if I'm asked to write a certain type of thing, if I plan for spending 20 hours to do it, then I'll spend 20 hours doing it. But if I only plan, if I only give myself five hours to do it, 
then I will finish it in five hours, right? So uh, there are certain cases where personally, I have found it very useful to, you know, certain things you have to do. There are certain you know, um, uh, things you're asked to do and you have to do it. But uh, if, it's, if I have to do it on Friday, then I will start Thursday at 8 p.m. and I will spend, you know, <coughs> three, two hours, three hours and just get it done because I have no choice, right? I have to be, I've, I've only allocated, I've only given myself a very small budget of time to do it. And there's no way that I can spend more time because I only started it, you know, shortly before it was due. And personally, I find that very useful because it, it prevents me from spending too much time on things that I know are not um, uh, a good use of my time, right? So uh, I won't answer what tasks go into this category. I think that's, that would get me into far too much trouble, but there are definitely many, many tasks that can be put in this kind of category and, um, and will help you free up time. You know, one of the magical things about being a human is that sometimes we do remarkably amazing things when we put constraints on ourselves, right? You know, if you actually give yourself a week to prepare, let's say for some lecture, then you won't actually spend a week of productive time doing it, right? In fact, you'll not do a very useful job, right? But when you give yourself exactly four hours to prepare, then those will be very focused, very, you know, very effective uh, four hours, right? So I think there are definitely cases where by following this kind of strategy, you can actually do even better, you know, do better than what you, than, um, what you would have done otherwise um, with less time and you'll get better at it, right? Because if you're, if you're forcing yourself each time, you're like, I only have this much time, then you will have to do it. And in fact, I learned this strategy first when I was in high school because one of my uh, books was too heavy. So I never wanted to bring it home because I used to ride my bike uh, to, the, to the high school. Um, and so I would just arrive <coughs> to the high school 10 minutes before school started. And then I had exactly 10 minutes to finish the homework that came from that large book, right? And I had no choice, you know, I had exactly 10 minutes, there was no other option, right? And by doing that, I became really good at finishing the homework in 10 minutes, right? I would be able to finish it perfectly in 10 minutes every single time. And I think that these are useful um, uh, disciplines uh, also for ourselves. Um. Yeah, good question. I, 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 there are just so many responsibilities where you have to do, you know, you have to like respond to emails and, and write letters of recommendation. And so, um, um, you know, you can, you, it's important to say no to some of these things. Uh, uh, I guess that's a very important skill to learn to say, to say no to like the, the, the you know, there's too many requests coming in. Um, you don't have to be on every program committee. Uh, you know, it, so it takes some time to learn that, but I think eventually everyone learns how to say no to some things. Um, but, um, uh, but still, even with that, there's just many responsibilities you have where you don't have to, you, you don't have to choose, you, you don't get a choice. Um, and I would say the important thing is to just block off some time to think and do research. So um, uh, I make sure that I have periods of time where I'm not going to be responding to emails and, uh, you know, whatever, doing the the test that I just doing test for my class or something like that. But we'll just spend that amount of time just really thinking about research problems. Um, and yeah, that's you know, during the postdoc, that was like my and the entire postdoc is pretty much that you don't have all these other responsibilities. You get to just think about research problems L during. Uh, after I became faculty, I really had to make an effort to block off a uh, block of time for that. One generic thing about what you need to do, there are actually two generic things about what you need to do. The first one is things you enjoy and, and feel that they, you know, it's a good investment of time. And the second one are things that you can't dodge, things that you have to do. Uh, so, you know, try to do more of the for former and less of the latter, but, you know, uh, and that, by the way, that through, throughout your career, uh, the set of things that you enjoy might change, though. Uh, and, and in general, I mean, you know, the older you have, the more uh, the, the more you have the privilege of saying no to, to th uh, things that people want you to do. But other than that, things don't change a whole lot in, in, in essence. 
but other things come along that you have to do. Yeah, you have letter more obligations. Writing, letter what? You have more obligations. Yes, letter writing, for example, something you don't have when you're young at all, and you are flooded with it later. So one thing is an example. Okay, Hugo? Uh, I don't know, personal judgment. Everyone has to use their personal judgment and uh, uh, yeah, and decide by uh, what, what what they feel is the is the right thing for them to do. 